So today's video has been sponsored by DistroKid. Uh, thanks to them, I'm able to get my music up on all the streaming platforms. And I've only got two songs so far under the label N828 Music. So far, it's been pretty good and I've really enjoyed the experience with them. Uh, as you can see on the screen here, I'll just scroll through. Some of the plans are the Musician Plan and then you've got Musician Plus. The Label Plan, you can see all the features that you get for all of these plans. Also, if you use my link down below, you'll get a discount of 7%. It helps me out and it gives you a bit of a discount as well. So there's a good one. Uh, that's Crossbeats, you'll see the link down below. And second to that, the stats and the bank account. You can see, first off with the stats, I'll just go to that. So stats, you can see it shows you, and these songs have only been up recently, so that's why the stats are low, but the stats are for the first seven days, 60 days, and 365 days. And you can see it gives you a whole bunch of information there with the stats. And second to that, with the bank, you can see a whole breakdown by services. So all of these different services are where your music goes uh, when you use DistroKid and they are uh, a lot so there's a whole bunch there you can see breakdown by artists if you have different artists I've just got myself for N828 music so far and uh, there's just a whole bunch of goodies in there that you can use based on the plan that you have so remember DistroKid Crossbeats is the link you'll see it down below grab that discount and it helps me out like I said and it helps you guys out and it's a win-win situation for us all so let's get it let's get straight into this tutorial let's go so I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, today's tutorial, I want to share with you how you split a stereo file. So one stereo file into stems, and that allows you to have more control over the gain staging of the kit. So for example, you want to have the snare higher or lower in the mix or the kick, whatever. Or if you want to compress the snare a little bit uh, more than you would normally as a group file. Or again, if you'd like to replace the snare and you want to be able to have the same timing as the original snare had. So. This is kind of a really cool thing that you can do. It's very helpful and let's get into this. I'll share with you how I do it. So the stereo file, I'll just play to you the drums. I'll play it in context of the mix and we'll just have a listen. All right, so you can hear and see that this is just one individual file. This is where all my drums are sitting in the rest of the mix. There's nothing else to do with the drums. So this is kind of key for uh, your ability to be able to manipulate the drums a little bit more effectively. So the way I would do this is I'd get Melodyne. Uh, so you can go into your menu here into audio and then edit with Melodyne. Uh, I've also got a hotkey, so I just hit Command M on my keyboard and that gives me that option as well. Uh, so then it sits like this. So you can see everything's across one file and that's not what we want. But what we're trying to do is analyze it so it's pitch based. So if you hit percussive pitched to select that and then choose redetect, that will then detect everything based on pitch. And Melodyne allows it to guess kind of where things are sitting based on the pitch of the actual sound. And this is really useful because it then gets you know gets you the kick, the snare, everything kind of separated. So what I do then at that point is I'll go in here, I'll create another uh, instrument track. So this could just be a blank. It doesn't have to have anything on it. Or if you want to use new drums on your track, you can do that as well. So you have another set of drums like battery or something like that, uh, or whatever you decide to put there. You drag this file down to the new instrument track, and then that separates everything in MIDI. So you can see here, uh, everything is now separated in MIDI. I've got all my, my kit pretty much kick, 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 snare, hi-hats. Um, they're different color codes because of the, the velocity as well. So it kind of gives you a bit of an indicator of what is what in the mix. Um, you'll be aware that my kick was probably the loudest thing inside of this particular mix. And that's why they're in red. So it does, it does give you a bit of information as well. So if I just move that up there, um, I can see this is the kick, kick kick, kick, and then snare, hi-hats, and then, you know, so on and so forth. That actually might be a hi-hat because of the velocity, so I might move that down there. And this is where the finessing kind of comes in a little bit. Uh, it really depends on what you're working with and how well uh, Melodyne can detect that. Um, but just bear in mind, it's not perfect, but it does work quite effectively, and it's way quicker than you going along chopping up every single sample. Um, based on what you think is the right sound. Um, so that's kind of how that works. So if you go along, you can kind of see it identifies most stuff pretty accurately. And then you just have to adjust it manually for what's not in there. I recommend following this uh, along, you know, have your stereo file here at the top and then just place a marker here and go back to the original um, and just follow this to see where the kick and the hi-hats and everything hit. 
then you kind of know what should be sitting in the right place if things aren't in the right channel. Um, once you've got that point, uh, then you can do this thing where it's allowing you to it's in instruments. So in this section here, you can actually explode the pitches to a track. So it separates them for you. So you don't have to go in there and individually pull them out. Uh, you just go explode to pitches and then that's going to separate every single sound. You can see now I've got my kick channel here. I've got my snare. I mean, it's a little bit wrong. I'm just showing you to speed this thing up if I had to spend the time, but I'm just trying to show you how to do it. Um, and then, you know, work with that. So you can see in this channel, I've got hi-hats. So if I was highlighting that, it doesn't actually show, show the separation, but when you go into it, you can see it. So I've got my hi-hats and they go along there. So that would play out as is. And then the point of this is once you've done all that, you've got the separate pitches. Uh, if things are not lining up perfectly, like I said, on the original, on this one, just go in there and make sure that you can see when you're playing it that the, they're all lining up. So that's that's what you do there. So I would have split them again. So I split to explode. So that's pretty much how that would look uh, once you have that section done. The next thing I'd recommend is this point is get each sample. Um, and then all you have to do is just go to the zero crossing. Um, or you can also use this thing where it is adaptive and it snaps to zero crossing. And then just sample each each sound. So if you have the, the kick here, just cut it at the start of the kick there. Just cut it anywhere along this part. And then I've got a key command, so command zero. And that samples my kick. I'm just going to normalize that. And now I've got the kick sampled, right? So that's on its own individual track. And you can see that's my kick down here. So I'll just relabel that kick. And that shows kick there now. So if I was to drag the MIDI that I had on this track here down to my new kick track, now I've got a kick that should be reasonably lined up. But the thing is with this, because Melodyne isn't putting it in the actual pitch of the key, it's just pitching it to a pitch. It doesn't mean it has to be in C1 or whatever. So if I just, there we go. So now it's at C3. So that's where the sample is playing. So you can see on here, the, the key is in the middle, C3. So now I've got the kick there. So it's as simple as that. So once you've got every single sound, you know, you've got all your sounds sampled. So again, I could go to my hi-hat. Uh, I just isolate one of these hi-hats. I can see this is the hi-hat here because it's the quietest part of the uh, sound. I just cut that at the zero crossing. And the reason why you do that is to avoid clicks and pops on your sound uh, and also the timing purposes as well. So if you've got it at zero crossing, then it's going to get the correct timing for how it was originally played out. Um, and again, command zero, that gives me the sample, normalize. I'll just turn this down because I don't want it to be as loud as that. Um, and then put a pin on it just so I can keep it there. And I'll rename this one as well. So this is the hi-hats, HH. And if I went to my hi-hats, so I believe uh, these would be the hi-hats probably. Oops. Yep, so that's the hi-hats there. There are probably other hi-hats, but like I said, I didn't finesse this as much as I could have. Uh, but all you have to do then is drag the hi-hats down to your hi-hat channel and you can see and listen. So again, they're not on the correct uh, note because they were pitched just based on pitch, not actually where the sampler was going to play it. So all you have to do is move those up a couple of octaves. So you can see this is kind of coming together now. So I'm getting all the, the right sounds in the right places. Um, I'm kind of just not spending a whole lot of time trying to figure it out. I'm, I'm really just finessing at the start. So if I just delete this, bring this back here and I can see like I've just really had to finesse these so that they, this is the important part, really just getting this part so that it's it's isolated in the right channel. So if you just move this, like some of these weren't, like I said, they're not going to be pitched pre perfectly, but they're kind of in the right place. But if you do that at the start, and then once you split the channels by pitch, then you've kind of just done half the job already. And then it's just a matter of just dragging these to the, the right um, channel that you're working on, on. So we'll just get the snare. So I'm going to go chop a snare sample here, uh, right at zero crossing there. and just keep 
the tails because it's kind of handy to have all of the sound available. Listen to this. All right, we've got the snare. And I'm just going to rename it snare. I guess you guys are kind of getting the idea of what I'm trying to tell you now. So that's the purpose of this. And I can see this one is probably the snare track because that's where I just chopped the sample at. So let's have a listen to that. All right, so we're missing a snare there. So this is the remainder of the snares. So drop that on there. Okay, so you can see, again, same thing. They're not all in the same um, correct octave. And then I'll just move these up in line. So there you go. So that's pretty much all of the work done. So we've split every single channel and we've got all the samples as we need them. And that's now split up this entire drum kit from one stereo file to all of the files being split out in stems. So it's really useful because when you come down to it, if you want to replace your snare, for example, say you've got a real live drum kit and you want to add a snare to it, or if you just want to add the snare on top of it, then you've got the timing available to you as well. And you've got the stems and now all I have to do is just bounce these out. And as you can see, it's not that long until it's done. But now I've got every single file uh, split out in its own stem and now it's all clean. I can gate it a little bit more if I need to. But it's just, it's just so simple to be able to have these split out in stems and it allows you so much more flexibility inside the mix as far as gain staging and EQ and other things like that. So hopefully this is a helpful tutorial. Uh, hopefully it does help you kind of with your drum kit if you want to split them up into separate stems. And yeah, I just thought it was really interesting when I was able to do this inside of Studio One and Melodyne helped me a lot in this process as well. So remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Peace out.